Welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting tool to show you, the FLIR EX Series E5 Pro. I'm gonna unbox this and I'm gonna show you everything that comes in this kit. I've got the exterior packaging off of the case and I just wanted to show you that FLIR does provide a very nice case for this camera. These are very expensive thermal imaging cameras so it's definitely good to see that, that they didn't just give you a cardboard box and make you purchase this case later or as an accessory. So this is provided as part of the kit. A couple things on the outside of the case. It is a hard plastic shell. They do have some very nice latches here. These are positive kind of lock latches where you can feel you got two of those, one there and one here. There is like a clear nameplate here where you can put, say, your company logo or even your name or whatnot there to identify your camera. You may even want to put what camera type that you have in here because some of these cases may look the same for different models. They have an area here where you can put a wire lock through and another one here on this side so you can actually wire lock this closed. And you do have a very nice carry handle right here. It's got a rubber type feel right there on the top and it does kind of positively lock out of the way when you're ready to use the case. They've got a little bit of what I would call little feet here. So if you're gonna set it down, it'll keep that stabilized. And on the bottom, it does feel stable when you set it on a table or anything when you're sitting it upright with the handle facing up. Now that the case is open, you're gonna notice a couple of things that they have done very well, is the camera has a molded location in there for it. So it's not just moving around, it's not just the egg crate style foam where you just have to pick and peel that out where you want it to go. This is actually custom fitted. This is more of a uh, uh, industrial hardened styrofoam, I would say, where it's maybe like coated, it's not gonna come apart and it definitely fits in there. Very nice, camera's not gonna be moving around, so I don't think this is gonna have a whole lot of movement. You actually have to kind of pull it out of there to get it out. And then if it did fall, you've got this egg crate material here on the top, and I would say you're, you're two or one and a half inches thick here on the top. So I, like I mentioned, dropping this, you don't wanna drop it, but I think if you've got enough protection with this type of case, looks like some accessories or things would go here. I do know a battery would fit here. I don't know if that's where maybe a charger spot or something that would go there. I'm gonna look and review for some maybe more accessories that go with this camera. And then they have your documentation box and it is fitted for that. And they may have another accessory that fits right in that spot. So you can maybe get everything out of here and throw the box away. Maybe you wanna keep the box completely up to you. The contents in that box I now have open right here and a couple things you're gonna have, like your warranty, your registration information. You've got a series of instructions. One thing I will mention about this is these are not very detailed as far as they do kind of line out what parts of the camera. They do kind of tell you how to get started. You're really gonna have to scan that QR code to get a little bit more in depth and you get the manual online from FLIR on how to use that camera. And there really are a lot of options about this thing. So I would highly recommend doing that or even watching other tutorials like this one that show you some of those basic features and some may get in more depth in this video. Now you also get the thank you card there from the president there. Uh, you do get a few more uh, QR codes there where you can do some of that in a certified center of training uh, on these tools here. So they do have that depending on what type of industry you're in if you need or have requirements like that. They have a calibration certificate in there for you, so that's nice to know that somebody did calibrate that and Quality Control did sign off. And then you've got uh, access to their app here. So they talk about that, FLIR Thermal Studio Suite. I would recommend getting that as well. That's where you can download your images and other things like that. A few other accessories were inside that box, one being the charger itself. So it's got a USB-C style uh, plug on this end. It does not detach from this charger. I do like that they did include the plug side. A lot of times you're getting a lot of these new accessories or tools and they don't have the plug side anymore. You know, not a bad thing, not a deal breaker, but you have to use almost the same plug on every tool if they didn't supply it. This one at least is hardwired to that. I have already charged the camera, so I did have this out. Few other neat things they have here in the box is since this is kind of sold around the world, they do have adapters for that. So if you're having to switch out that plug, 
you can do so and put these different adapters depending on what country you live in, uh, depending on what you've got to plug in, what type of wall socket. So they do leave that in there. That's a nice feature too that you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, and also if you're traveling with this, you may need those depending on where you go. This last cable here, this is how you would transfer your files off of the camera. Just a regular USB-A to a USB-C right here. Pretty standard cable. And I could show you on the camera where that plugs in right here at the top. So your charging port and your port to move your videos and your pictures off is right there at the top. I did boot the camera up offline so we weren't sitting here watching that progress bar. But when you turn it on, you press and hold that power button and you're just going to get a progress bar so you can see the status of where it's at. A couple things I'm going to show you on the screen that are displayed right now. We've got the temperature here where you've got this center spot or center dot pointed. It's going to give you the actual temperature and that can be in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Right now I have this one in Fahrenheit. Right here you've got an indicator that tells you how much battery that you have left. Right now we're in the yellow icon for that one. So it does have a color icon where it's green, yellow, red. Um, that way you're not sitting here looking and trying to guess how many bars you have left. So that is a nice feature there. It's actually a color uh, gradient there to show you how much battery is left. This right here is the distance that you are from the object to line up that thermal image. So this is using a technology called, I think they call it MSX, where you're using some of the uh, camera images plus the thermal images. And that is to determine how far away you are from your object. And you can increase or decrease that distance so your thermal image actually lines up with the object that you're trying to see through that camera lens plus the thermal lens. So that's pretty neat because sometimes different thermal cameras, you may try to put that over a hot spot and you're getting a reading or you're getting a hot spot reading, but if you're trying to be real precise, you can't exactly see where it's talking about. And that's especially important, say, if you have multiple breakers that are close to each other, this will actually help line that up so the thermal image and the camera image equal each other so you can tell exactly which one you're having a problem with. Here on the right side of the camera, this is your highest temperature that it sees and this is its lowest temperature that it sees. So it's got a little bit of a gr color gradient to explain to you, I'm showing the highest temperature in that lighter color or that orangish color, and I'm showing the lowest temperature in a purple or a dark color here. So that helps you understand what is the highest temperature on the screen at that time, what's the lowest temperature on the screen at that time. A few other features I'm gonna talk about is that this is actually a touch screen. So that's very nice. You don't always have to use the buttons. I know sometimes that's very frustrating that you see something on the screen, you wanna select it. On some style cameras like this that you cannot do that. On this E5 Pro you can. If you can see those three little dots there, that's where you can select and you can get into some of these menu options here where you can do some things like say on your settings. And they talk about little things like here, your FLIR Ignite. This is that extra website cloud-based where you can send your pictures You'd have to have a separate account for that. You've got like measurement parameters, your connections. This does actually have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I'm not gonna be able to get into all of that tonight. Um, so if you do click on the menu and on the manuals for this, it'll probably go in a little bit more depth than I can go on this short video on YouTube. But all these little settings right here that you can get to your connections, your camera temperature ranges, you can adjust things like that just by going there. Um, you can change it from the Fahrenheit to Celsius. You can change your device settings, your save options in your storage and things. Going back to that menu there, you do have other options here where you can change the color. So right now we're on iron. You can go to rainbow. You can go to rainbow high contrast. You can go to black hot. You can go to Arctic. There's all kind of different options there um, that you can go to. And I do like that they allow that functionality depending on what you need. Some people could be colorblind and you may not be able to see certain colors. You may want to go to a different color here. You may want to be see exactly what you're looking for. If it's something's hot, you want it to show up white on the screen. You may want to be able to view it a little bit easier um, so you don't have to worry about, you don't have just one set color here. A few other features here is you can change what I call that center spot, what they call the center spot to there. You can take that completely off. You'll get no measurement on your temperature here. You can put that back, it's gonna stay in the center only. You can tell it to move. There's a red dot, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it, what that red dot does is it goes and finds the hottest spot on the screen. 
within this box. You can tell it to find the coldest spot on the screen within that box, and it shows up as a blue circle when it does that. You could tell it here to find the hot spot, um, and it'll give you some different measurements here that are within that box. And then you can do what they call uh, here a temperature setting where you can put a known setting that you want to ignore or you want it to see and then compare your reading to. So like I mentioned, the manual is going to be able to describe that in a little bit more detail than I can do in this short video. But you have plenty of options when you're trying to do something with that center spot there. Over here on the next one, we've got the different picture modes. That thermal MSX is what I was mentioning to you, where it's using a series of the camera and the thermal image to overlay the two so you can get an exact look at what you're uh, viewing on the other side. You're not having to worry about, you know, it's, it's, it's muddy and I can't really tell exactly what it's looking for. You can almost see a very clear image on the back side where it's outlined. If you go over to the next setting there uh, in this image mode, you have thermal imaging only. I don't know if you can see the difference it did there, but the image is very blurry when it does that. I can't really see definition. I'll try to put something, say, behind the camera there that you would should be able to read. You can't really see anything on my iPhone there when I'm in that setting, but when I go to, say, thermal MSX there, you can actually see my screensaver. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. You can see the clock on my phone there whenever I've got it on, and it's using, like I said, both of those images there. On the next one here, this is your picture-in-picture. Picture. That's very nice if you're wanting to see the actual picture on this parameter here, and then you're wanting to use this centerpiece to see the thermal image itself. So you really get, what I would say, get your bearings as to where you are trying to take that picture, say you're in an electrical box. This will only go in that thermal imaging mode when you're in this picture in picture and you can see precisely where you're trying to use that camera. Then if you just want to take a digital picture, you can do that. You just go into the digital mode there and then you can take just a digital photograph. On this last menu right here, this is where you can change the screen temperature depending on what you're trying to view there. So you can stay in automatic, the screen adjusts itself, or if you go in manual, you're going to get this bar over here where you can manually rotate this up or down. You can see how I'm changing the screen color. And it really just depends on how much you want that thermal image to stand out to kind of give you that indication of, of what you're looking for there. And then you can easily just change it back to auto automatic just by pressing there, hit auto. To get out of any of these menu screens, you can either hit that select button or just touch on the screen there. You do have some more options here at the top. So these are some things that let you access quickly without going all the way back through the settings. But you got your Bluetooth where you can turn this off or on, Wi-Fi off or on. You can change the screen brightness. You can turn the lamp off or on. You've got the auto upload, and that's if you have that separate app like I was mentioning through FLIR. You've also got, it tells you your date, time, and how much storage you've used. And you can also see that battery function while you're right here on this screen. So on the manual buttons, a few things I'm going to show you. If you hit the play button, this is going to show you any pictures that you've taken. And like I mentioned, since it is touchscreen, you can just click on this. This was an actual two-way radio on a cabinet at work. So you could see that heat signature of that two-way radio charging up. And then you can offload this either through their app or, or through their cloud app, or you can do this just by connecting that wire in the top of the camera. So you can go back and select all your images just by hitting that play button. If I had multiples in here, um, then I can close the gallery if I wanted to. There's where you can connect into their app. We're not logged into anything there. Um, you can add file names if you want to add new folders in here. Then we can also do selection. Say we want to delete multiples or anything like that. But again, you can close back out of your gallery. Um, if you did uh, want to move pictures around or move them to folders, you're also able to do that. This button here where my thumb is, is the back button. So say that you're using this center button here, you can select all the menus to go to each one of these just by pressing in the center button there. And you can go side to side depending on which one that you wanna select. But say you get selected in a menu and you really don't wanna be there, you wanna back out, you can hit back. You come back to this main menu, you can hit back again. You can always just Go into it like that, just press the touch screen, but it closes that whole menu. So it really just depends on functionality. Some people get really good with using the buttons. So for the back button, some people may prefer that over using the touch screen. So like I mentioned, if you're wanting to just get out of a function that you accidentally selected, 
you can easily just hit that back button and you can hit it the, the times, how many times you are menus uh, selection in. So you do have to press and hold the power button to power this up and you have to press and hold to power it back down. That's really the only functionality I found for that button. Uh, when we were talking about this menu button here, you can in certain menus, if we can get back in there, like say you're in temperature scale, if you go into manual, this also works if you're looking right there, we're working that distance. You can see how that lights up bright white or we go back to changing that color mode. So if I'm pressing up and down, I'm actually adjusting that color mode just by pressing that button right there. So you can definitely use that functionality, but most of that also is touchscreen enabled. So if you don't like using the buttons, you can use the touchscreen. If you don't like using the touchscreen, you could pretty much use the buttons for all the functionality that I found on this camera. I do have the camera powered down, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the sensor side for you just to show you those sensors one more time. We already did talk about this lens cover right here. It's just a little knob here on the bottom that you can slide and cover and open those lenses when you're not in use. This gold looking lens here, this is the thermal imaging camera. Try not to touch that with your fingers. Try not to get anything stuck in there. This is the digital camera right here. So that's how it's able to overlap those two images. So it's not just using the thermal imaging camera. It's using that digital camera and that MSX mode to overlap those two where you get a very clear picture to determine what you're looking at there. This is that light. I would say this is about the brightness of an iPhone light, maybe a little bit more dim than that, but it definitely gives you a nice little flashlight if you're dark in an area and you need to turn that on, depending on what you're trying to inspect. On the front of the camera, we already talked about that trigger a little bit, but this is pretty much how you're taking that image, how you're saving that image. It's almost like you're opening your shutter when you press that trigger. And that's pretty common for most cameras like this. And most people are used to that style of way of taking a picture. This completes my general overview for this FLIR E5 Pro thermal imaging camera. There's definitely a lot more features on this than I can show you during this one YouTube video. If you're interested in more content related to this camera, or if there's any features I didn't explain well or I didn't go over, just reach out to me and I'll try to see if I can get you another video to explain that in a little bit more detail. There's all kinds of features, like I mentioned on this camera, that we certainly can't go through just in one video. But I would also just refer you to the FLIR manual online if there's anything else that maybe I didn't explain well enough and you want to get a little bit more information on. I think this is a perfect camera for somebody that's doing this professionally, whether you're an electrician, whether you're trying to find heat signatures of bearings and maintenance, maybe you're doing troubleshooting of engines on uh, cars or boats or anything like that. It's a great purchase. It's not a cheap camera, but I would say also it's more their entry level. Some of these cameras go from $1,000 all the way up to $16,000. So it's definitely in their lower price range for these cameras. But I think the E5 Pro is a really good camera for anybody who's needing to see thermal images for any of the things that they do out in the field. Hope this information was useful or helpful for you. And if it was, please subscribe and share. And that's to the point.